Have you ever felt stuck in the middle? Well, what do I mean by that? Well, I'm talking about blended family. So today on The Father Show, we're going to be talking about blending families and how that works. And we've got an expert with us today to tell us exactly how to do it. So stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Father Show, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you joined us today. Today, we're going to be talking about blended families, and you know, so many times we, as men, you know, we get into a relationship, and we feel like we're stuck in the middle, because we have our former wife over here, and we have our current girlfriend or wife over here, and you're trying to keep everything together and everybody happy and blended and 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 so you can be happy so we got a young lady here today by the name of Judy Graybill and she's an international relationship expert and a certified step family coach and she helps couples to make uh, to work through challenges as a team so that they can experience a stronger social spousal relationship, harmony, and deep emotional, emotional intimacy. Man, I, my tongue is tired today. But she has helped clients across five continents, and she is also a speaker, a consultant, and an author of an upcoming book, Journey to Love. So ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome Miss Judy Gray Beal. Hey, Judy, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you very much, Mike, for having me. I appreciate being here, and hello to all the listeners. Oh, well, we're glad to have you. You know, we've been talking, you know, about blended family, and I know personally how hard it is to blend a family, and... It is something that, you know, you hear a lot of women talking about and, and they are, you know, one, they're so protected of the kids. So they're really protected of being a blended family. Uh, but fathers, we have a burden on trying to blend, you know, the family together because he may have kids along with his new spouse or girlfriend having kids and you got to try to blend them together and hopefully everybody gets along, which normally does not happen. But <laughs> but it's it's an ideal situation. And one thing comes to mind, you know, on this show, we've talked about co-parenting. And if you ever wish that you could co-parent with your formal spouse, this is the time because when you're talking about a blended family, man, if the you and your formal spouse can get along, that's going to take a lot of burden off of you. So I know co-parenting is one thing that is huge and we should try to do that as much as we can. So let me ask you, what is the definition of? of a blended family Ooh, uh, the definition um if any well basically a single parent who joins another uh single and only one adult has to have children from a previous relationship mm -hmm. so basically any single parent who then gets into another relationship mm -hmm. okay. uh, that's that's basically it because the step family dynamics actually start at in the dating stage before they even move in together. Yeah. And so the word blended family, um, there are some 
colleagues in my profession, some step family professionals who don't really like the word blended because blended implies that it all becomes one. Like um, I compare it to like a shake, like a milkshake, yeah. where you blend all the ingredients together and it comes out tasting like one flavor and it tastes really good. Mm -hmm. For me, it's more, I prefer the term step family simply or remarried with children simply because it's step families are more like a quilt in my opinion okay. so when you have like a quilt you take all these little different pieces of fabric and you sew them all together and i'm sorry maybe your audience doesn't do that men probably are not into making quilts but just you know for the analogy <laughs> it's it's more like that though i mean it's like because the finished product is still complete and it's still beautiful, but each individual part of it is still individual and unique. And then yeah. you fit together in a very synergistic sort of way. And so that's how I like to look at the, it's not the way it happens most of the time, but when you you opened it with the ideal of, of that, and that's my ideal of what a, a blended family should look like the definition i guess you could say yeah and and i agree to some point i don't me personally like i'm in the blended uh family now and i don't really say blended i just say my family and or uh i think you mentioned you know bringing kids together and I can't remember what you said now. but you you know I don't put step kids in front of it because they're really the and and a lot of it does depends on the age but step kids are you know they're young they're like your own kids there's no really step kids because you as a father if you're being a true man, you're taking care of them just like they were your own. So to say step, no, I just say in in my family, I just say my kids. And even yeah, some, that's very common. And you, yeah. I, I'm sorry, I, I did I interrupt you? No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, it's just you bring you bring up so many points with what you just said. Um, because first of all, that is the ideal to treat all the kids just like your own and that is and that's what we want that is the ideal and so that's great um i but um in sub fa some families that's not going to work and the reason why is because it really evolves around whether the children want you to be their natural father or not and you mentioned the age and the age mm -hmm. is a huge um thing because the younger the kids the easier it is they're just going yeah. to adopt this is my dad they're not they're not going like six or younger they're going to think of you this is my dad period mm -hmm. they're not mm -hmm. going to think this is my stepdad but when you get into the older kids when when you're blending at like the teenage level um i want to six is like a rule of thumb but then it's like you get to they may say stepdad or they may call you by your first name as opposed to dad so it, then it gets a little bit iffier and the dynamics come in on whether um they want a dad or not if the kids don't want a dad it doesn't matter how you treat them tr you know chaos is going to ensue and that's actually part of the problem and that's part of the reason why um fathers do feel a lot of pressure because um, if you're blending with a woman who wants you to be that dad to their kids, then, but the kids don't want you to, um, you know, that's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah. And, and that was one of my questions I was going to ask you and I think you already hit it, is why does so many blended families, which is so common, I think is actually the majority in families uh, units today, but why do so many of them fail? 
Right. And so there's so many different factors that come into to play here. And, uh, and one is the relationship that the kids have with the other parent. So, mm -hmm. um, like you talk about co-parenting with your other experts. And I, I think by the way, your other experts that you had talking about co-parenting, I did, I think they did a fabulous job. I just want to say that because I listened to them. Um, but the, the thing, the reason why co-parenting with the ex-spouse is so important and getting along is because if you're not getting along with the ex-spouse, chances are that your ex-spouse is not going to want or they're not going to accept the new wife. And, yeah. and that's actually part of the reason why dads get into the middle is mm -hmm. because if your former wife is bad mouthing your current wife, your current wife is going to give you a lot of pressure to, um, you know, to do something, say something, fix it, so to speak. But what also happens is if your former wife is not accepting your current wife, they're also going to badmouth your current wife to the kids. Right. So then the kids are going to hear that and they're going to just start disrespecting your current wife. And um, so I want to make a distinct, it, it makes a difference on whether you're a stepdad or a biological dad, if you have kids of your own or you don't, because all that all kind of has like some factors into it also. Absolutely. But in general, this is part of like what happens. Um, so when the, this is how the turmoil happens is like the kids are hearing bad things from maybe their, their mom and they're taking it home and they're taking it out on your current wife or they're mm -hmm. acting up behaviorally. And then, um, so it just becomes difficult to, to, to navigate. And then if you try to um, discipline, they might be uh, not wanting to do the discipline. They're not going to listen. So yeah. then it becomes even more difficult. So then, what happens is you have a scenario where the kids are just like in anarchy and the are they're rebelling and you have um, a stepdad on the other on one hand is going to be uh, they might be wanting to discipline even more because that's what they learned. So mm -hmm. like when the kids are acting up, I'm just going to instill more rules, more rules, more rules because that's the tendency. Uh, but, and the wife is like, yeah, that's what I want because I want, I, I need order in the house, but it's yeah. actually counterintuitive because that's not why the kids are rebelling in the first place. They, you have to understand the underlying reasons for the kids rebelling mm -hmm. and more uh, restrictions is going to just make them rebel even more. And so then there's like, there's some families who are just wanting them to make the kids happy. I have to listen to the kids. If they're happy, we're going to be happy. So then a lot of biological parents are then backing off on the discipline that the step parents are trying to create. And that that's when more eruptions take place because now the biological parent has undermined the authority of the step parent. Do, do, do you see how this, this happens? And then, so now you just have more anarchy, more rebellion, and you have a lot of people who are not understanding the real issues and why everybody is arguing in the first place. Well, yeah. And I think the, the fact that, you know, in any situation and any relationship, communication is so important. And for, you know, we know, you and I, I, and I'm sure some other professionals out there know that the kids can break up a marriage just so easy be, and because they know what they're doing. They know how they're manipulating one off of the other. So the two parents, and sometimes in these cases, when you're talking about blended family, really the three parents 
if they're not all together, you know, the former spouse, the new spouse, and the husband, if they're not all together on one page, the kids can run amok, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, absolutely. I mean, I, you, you touched on a lot of um, really key issues there with so much. Um, the manipulation, and that's, that's part of something that a lot of biological parents do not want to accept about their kids. A lot of biological parents won't see it. So you have a step parent coming in, whether it's a stepmom or a stepdad, and we'll talk about the stepdads in this case since that's your audience. Um, they're, a step parent is going to see it easier. So then if a step parent, a stepdad is coming in and they're trying to, um, they're saying like, look on, you know, to their, their wife, you're, you're, sorry, but you know, uh, Joe is trying to manipulate you. So, and she's like, oh, maybe. And so like the, the mom <laughs> is like, you know, she just doesn't want to accept it. So a step parent, a step dad's hands are going to be tied if a mom does not want to admit that the kids are manipulating. So that's really important. You have to be honest. You have to look at the behavior. And and so um And don't say not you know, my I baby. Wanna... Right. Right. <laughs> um so uh and then like biological fathers on the other hand you know they tend to be a little bit more realistic they'll actually see it and one of the things i want to impart to your audience is that um fathers actually have the most in natural influence it like a bio the biological parent always does so if you have if you're a biological dad that does not have um I mean, you're a biological dad and uh, your your kids are uh, acting up, but and your step and maybe you're wanting your stepmom to actually be more your current wife to be more involved with the kids. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, you want to have a big, happy family. You can't figure out one of the things I see a lot is that. Um, the relationship between the kids and the stepmom breaks down. So mm -hmm. if, if the father, biological father is willing to see the, the manipulation and they're not going to allow it, mm -hmm. i.e. have healthy boundaries, then it allows for a relationship to happen between the kids and the stepmom. Now, but, do you... Oh, oh, I was just going to ask you, is there a time frame when, you know, a parent or the step parent in this case, let's just put it that way so we can easily identify it, should start being more disciplinary, uh, more forceful, um, you know? Yeah, being... that's a really good question as far as the time frame, because it really depends on how well the two parents are understanding all, all the step family dynamics, how you mm -hmm. mentioned communication, that's, that's really vital. And one of the problems with communication is really um, understanding each other. So like when a stepmom, for example, has, um, when they have an issue with something that the kids have done and they mention it to the father, the first action is for biological father and moms do this too, because it's that biological is to defend their kids. So there's that misunderstanding that happens. So um, like they automatically think that the stepmom is misunderstanding the intention of the kids and it's not that she's misunderstanding but there is misunderstanding happening there's a lot of misunderstanding happening they don't understand um the step family dynamics and and without 
there are so many step family dynamics to talk about. So I don't want to get, I don't feel like it's would be the most beneficial to actually talk about all of those dynamics. But I will say that as far as the timing is concerned, it depends on how well you are understanding each other, how well you are on the same team. Mm -hmm. If so, initially the, the biological parent has to instill all those rules mm -hmm. and over time, what has to happen is that the kids have to develop a relationship with the stepmom. Right. And yeah. only after the kids develop that natural relationship with the stepmom will they be li willing to listen to her. And, because and you... the stepmom does not have natural influence like the mm -hmm. father does. Right. The father has a natural influence with both the kids and the ex-wife. So the, the biological father actually has the most influence and the most uh, direct uh, power, if you will, or control over the situation, whereas the mother doesn't. So the father actually has to foster that relationship between the kids and the stepmom. Right. So only after that relationship between the kids and the stepmom is developed, it will develop naturally over time, but it's going to look different because it depends on how everybody navigates those dynamics and communicates and all those other things. Yeah. Um, it, that could take only a couple months or it could take years. Right. I mean, the statistic is seven to 10 years in order for a step family to feel uh, like a cohesive family. Oh, really? Where they're not feeling like the step, where they can just say it's a family as opposed to step. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that has to develop over time. And what I say to clients is that you'll know when the kids start saying, wow, mom, or call her by her name st to the stepmom, that was a great idea. Mm -hmm. Or they'll start mimicking what the stepmom does. They'll start mimicking what the step parent does. When they start, and so that's when you know that the kids are developing that relationship. That's when you, that's the influence. So you really want to look for that influence. And, and we know that we can't change other people, but I really like to express the influence aspect because I think people miss that. They forget there's a thing called influence and influence is subtle. It's not about changing the other person. It's mm -hmm. not about forcing the change in other people. It's actually about allowing it to develop over time and, and the relationship comes first and yeah. then the influence happens naturally yeah and Does you have sense? to build a relationship with that child before you start disciplining or and that's this works on both ends whether you the stepfather yes. or the stepmother you can't just walk in and say okay everything's going to run the way i say it's going to run this is my house and this is how we do it you have to be able to open up your arms and your heart and let yes, that. Yes, and it is, it's it, hard, it's easier said than done because oh, like absolutely. what you said in the beginning, it's like you want it, you want them to, you're going to treat your stepkids the way you would treat your own kids. Mm -hmm. And if they're not ready for that, then that's going to backfire. So, I mean. Well, what if you would, if you are a stepfather, and you're going into a relationship and you haven't had any kids. So now all of a sudden you are married and you have two, three, four kids, whatever, and you haven't had any. How would you suggest a father, you know, start taking on that uh, issue? Right. So a stepdad who does not have his own children coming into uh, that marriage um, they have a much harder time of it. And part of that, again, the communication with the current wife is really, really important because expectations come into play. What are, you have to have realistic expectations mm 
Mm -hmm. And and sometimes your wife is going to put unrealistic expectations on you. So Mm -hmm. the best way to come in is to um, is to instead of trying to be a disciplinarian, it's better to try to be a role model. So just it, it is really about keeping your side of the street clean and it is about um, your personal integrity. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if you're just being a good influence overall, whether you're just trying to listen, you're just trying, you're, I, I think listening, that, that's probably really key. What is the, the child really asking for? What are they really yeah. wanting? Really listening to with the intent of understanding what your partner wants. Um, I think there, there's really a necessity to really understand step family dynamics. Yeah. There's a psychology behind that. Um, I got certified through the step family foundation. Mm-hmm. And what I realized is that in my situation, the reason why I became a certified step family coach and the reason I'm so passionate is from my failed step family experience, which was really dysfunctional. Mm-hmm. And what I learned is that we really sabotaged ourselves unintentionally based off of these unrealistic expectations. Yeah. So um, it's really about understanding the deeper emotional issues that everybody has and really understanding understanding yeah. and that. I think as a, and it, it takes a lot of work. Yeah, and I think as a father, we should be, if we are the stepfather and you know, you shouldn't force your feelings on the child or your force that child or make the child feel like it's being forced into this relationship. You would you say that they need to let the child in a right. sense so what come happens, to them? Right. So what happens is they get they start. What happens very, very often with that is they have that intention. But then when the kids start doing things that the step parent thinks is not good, is not healthy. Like they get really, really concerned about the emotional development of the children. Mm -hmm. They get really, really concerned about where this is leading. Um, And so there's a lot of things that play into that. Like um, it could be like the ex-spouse is a big one. So one of the things, uh, one of the really, really common scenarios is that um, as a dad, it's the ex ex-wife that is the bad influence Mm -hmm. as a biological dad that's that's one of their main concerns as the stepdad it could be the ex i mean the biological dad that is Mm -hmm. the bad influence so you know and we all want our kids to have an equal relationship with both parents but the reality is the harsh reality is that's not always feasible you know like if it's a very unhealthy situation i mean there is a divorce for them. and in some co-parenting situations um the reason the co-parenting does not go smoothly is because they tried and failed over and over and over again and we can mm-hmm. talk to our blue in the face about you know um influence and being a, and being a great mo- role model and if i'm just a really if i just do what is right that other person is going to snap out of it and suddenly start, <laughs> you know, doing the right thing, but they don't. And so the, the hard part, the rub with the step parent is that they get really, really concerned. It's hard to step back and just watch them doing these things yeah. that you feel is really a detriment to their development where you feel it's really not going in the right direction and disciplining is not helping because as a step parent, you know, you're not supposed to discipline and that's the mom's. And even if you did try to discipline, the kids are going to reject it. So Mm -hmm. that's, that's when that stepdads really start feeling stuck is because it was like, I'm really, really concerned. Like, you know, they really, it's, from a place of compassion, but 
but how it's received by their partner is you just don't understand my kids. Yeah. You just don't understand what's going on. And then they start because moms will start feeling like um, defensive, like you're attacking their parenthood. They're you're mm -hmm. like they'll feel like you're attack attacking the way. Um, like, are you saying I'm a bad mom? And, and dads will do that too, you know, mm -hmm. they'll think, oh, and, and that's like the worst thing you could do. It's like, no, because in the communication, you didn't once say anything about their parenting <laughs> skills. You're talking about the kid. You're talking about their development. You're talking about the, the ex's influence. You never mentioned anything about, you know, the parenting skills of your partner, but that's how they receive it. That's how they hear it. Yeah. So, um, that's that's part of the reason why they feel so stuck so like what i want to say with the biological uh parents uh biological dads is really to feel um optimistic with the action taking and i know i just said all that emotional crap about all the things that could go wrong and then i say <laughs> be optimistic um but what I mean is like when you're looking at the bigger picture, when you, when you, well, let me say this, you want to be a stronger positive influence than the negative influence of the X or the, a stronger positive influence than the negative influence of whether it's their friends, the X or the other parent, you know, do you know what I mean? So like when yeah. we, if you're looking at that as the bigger picture, then it really just becomes about healthy boundaries, keeping your side of the street clean and being a role model. And sometimes it means they have to learn the lessons the hard way. Uh, okay. You know, there's well, so me, many different things I could say on yeah. this. Well, let me ask you this. And what would you tell two fathers, the biological father and the stepfather, how would you suggest that they come together so that they can have the best interest of the child and work together to make sure the child is living the best life that it can? Do you have any suggestion for men on that? Um, yeah, well, choose your battles wisely. You know, that's that's a huge thing you know there's um it is a uh when i say choose your battles wisely i mean there's a difference between um drowning be protecting yourself having healthy boundaries defending yourself versus um being aggressive so you want to be more diplomatic as opposed to aggressive you're not trying to change anybody. It, you don't want to push getting along. Um, you do want to try to think, uh, ask yourself, what is the highest good for all involved? If you look at it that way, you know, sometimes you have to swallow your pride. Pride is a very, very good thing, but it's, <laughs> it can have that opposite effect right. if you're going to be in arrogance, if you're going to be right. self-righteous about what the other person is doing wrong. Yeah. Do you know? So um, I, I would say uh, sometimes swallow your pride, but don't be a doormat. Okay. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. But uh, Judy, I want to thank you for being on the show and providing your expertise in this. So let our audience know how they can get a hold of you. Okay, well, the best way to get a hold of me is uh, on Facebook. Um, I have two pages. My first page is Judy Graybill or at Judy M. Graybill. It says Journey to Real Love on the cover photo. My second page is Step Family Coach. I'm also on Instagram as Judy.M.Graybill. I'm on LinkedIn as Judy Graybill. And my website is JudyGraybill.com, which is on the banner of the bottom of your screen. Okay. Well, thank you. And I want to make sure that, you know, these folks can get a hold of you. So 
don't go away but so stay on the line i'm going to talk to you in a, in a little bit but ladies and gentlemen uh, that's our show for today and i want to thank you for joining us we had judy Graybill, and she provided some great information on you know being stuck in the middle as a uh, blended family and in this society today most families are blended so we know it's a problem and we know that so many people have uh, problems getting their kids along I know I did when uh, my daughter was younger so I, I've been through it and I understand it but if you need additional information and additional resources I want you to go to the father show resource program uh, website and you're gonna go to the father show with Mike Thompson .com and just go up to resources and you will find a list of resources and in, in your state and you can also find Judy and you can you know give her a call because she can work all over the place and she's been in five continents and she doesn't have to be in your state but you can get a hold of her and talk to her so don't forget subscribe when you before you leave and if you like it click on the like button and let us know and also feel free to share it but I also want you to leave the comments in the bottom if you have some show that you would like for us to do please let us know if you would like for to comment on this show let us know as well we'll love to have all your comments so we'll know what we're doing is working for you so ladies and gentlemen that's our show for today uh, we'll love to see you again next week in the meantime god bless mm -hmm.